Good evening and Shavua Tov. Thank you all for coming this evening. I would have loved to be with you in person, but you, when you hear why I simply could not come, I know you will understand, and I hope to feel all your positive energy with me at this time. On Saturday night, Yud Cheshvan, this very night, this very date, this very time, ten years ago, we were burying our son, Nachshon, Hashem Yikom Damo. May God avenge his blood. As most of you surely remember, in October 1994, Nachshon, a soldier in an elite commando unit of the IDF, was kidnapped and held hostage by Hamas terrorists for six days. Nachshon was filmed on video, turning to the then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin to inform him that the conditions for his release were that their spiritual leader, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, and 500 other Hamas prisoners were to be released. If their demands were not met, said Nachshon on that cursed tape, he would be executed on Friday night at 8 p.m. Seeing him bound hand and foot with a rifle pointed at his head simply drove us, his family, along with millions of people around the globe, mad. However, we did not have the luxury of breaking down. From that moment for the next five days, we were all mobilized to do everything in our power to save our son. Of course we spoke to Prime Minister Rabin, who informed us that he would never negotiate with terrorists nor yield to blackmail. We announced Nachshon's American citizenship to all the media of the world, and President Clinton intervened with Arafat. Prime Minister Rabin put all the responsibility on Arafat, claiming that since the videotape came from Gaza, Nachshon was being held in Gaza under Arafat's domain. I personally called Prime Minister Rabin and told him that my son was serving in the Israeli army, was an Israeli citizen, and that we hold only Israel responsible for getting him home safely. The chief rabbi of Israel flew to France to speak to President Mitterrand personally, since France has excellent relations with Arabs. All the world leaders intervened and said that this was an abomination that could not be ignored. We called Muslim religious leaders everywhere in those countries with whom Israel does not have diplomatic relations. Syria, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the whole Muslim world. And they all said on the media that by Muslim religious law, the terrorists must not harm our son. Of course, we also turn to our brothers and sisters in Israel and throughout the world to pray for him, to light an extra Shabbat candle for him. That Friday night was the night of the ultimatum because he had now become everyone's brother, son, and friend. On Thursday night, when a prayer vigil was held at the Western Wall, similar prayer vigils were held at that same time throughout the Jewish world. Indeed, people of good faith everywhere prayed for him, as I know from over 50,000 letters that we received. We did not know that on Thursday, about the time of the prayer vigils, Israel intelligence had found and was interrogating the driver of the car who kidnapped him three kilometers from Ben Gurion Airport, and that he was not being held in Gaza, but in a village called Birnabala, located approximately 10 minutes from our home. We did not know that based on this information, Prime Minister Rabin made a lone decision for which he took full responsibility to send in a brigade of soldiers 
from the most elite unit of the army, those who operated the rescue attempt in Entebbe, to attempt a military rescue attempt. With tears running down my face, still 10 years later and forevermore, I must tell you that the military attempt was badly botched and the terrorists killed Nachshon and the commander of the unit, Captain Nir Poraz, of blessed memory, under the eyes of the other soldiers, who themselves were all wounded. And so on Saturday night, after a conversation with Rabin and the commander-in-chief of the IDF, Ehud Barak, we buried our son. My husband was at that time concerned that there would be a crisis in faith since so many secular Jews who had prayed, cried, and lit candles for him would now say that God did not hear their prayers. He, my husband, asked Nachshon's Rosh Yeshiva, Rav Moti Elon, to please say in the Father's name during the eulogy that he, the father of Nachshon, had prayed for many things over the years, and God's answer was yes. God certainly heard every prayer and collected every tear, but his answer as our Father in heaven was no this time, and no is an answer, though we, his children, did not and could not understand. And then we mourned. Hundreds and thousands of people came to our home. Our fax machine broke down. Sacks of letters were delivered every day. Some just addressed the Waxman family, Israel. It was during that week of mourning that Kalman Samuels came to me with a dream of establishing a permanent Shalva center to be named Beit Nachshon. I too have a special child, Raphael, who spent every afternoon a weekly sleepover and a monthly Shabbaton at Shalva, not to mention an eight-day summer sleepover camp, all of which brought him incredible joy. And so I decided that it was this loving facility, more than any monument of stone, street or square of brick and mortar, that would help the most helpless members of society and their families, that would memorialize my son. I cannot begin to envision our family's life without the benefits that Shalva provided us not to mention the fact that as soon as the video of Nachshon's capture became public, Kalman Samuels came to my house, packed a bag, and took Raphael, no questions asked, until after the Shiva. You, ladies and gentlemen, are part of the tremendous chesed that Chalva does. You, are our partners in destiny, which according to Rav Soloveitchik, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, is the concept of choosing how we handle what fate has determined for us. We chose to make our son Nachshon's life and death meaningful. We chose to place him, his memory, among all those events which we are commanded to remember, not to forget. Shalva, Beit Nachshon, is now the vehicle through which I communicate with our friends like you throughout the world. It is all of you who show us caring, loving, empathy, who have by your deeds, not only words, given me the strength to continue to speak, a voice which Nachshon and his brother 
Rafael Shayichye, do not have. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The Afi Ma'ev. Afi, Afi to Arishon.